So, next game, Cowboys versus Knights. We've both unanimously gone Knights on this one. The Cowboys have looked pretty off the boil of late. Last week, it just I we were watching the game, and when the Tigers struck first, you were like, okay, that's, that's, a, that's an early try. No, nothing in that. And then all of a sudden, things just all fell apart for the Cowboys way too quickly. And yeah. I, can't, I can't pinpoint exactly what it was that made them fall apart. All I know is it, it happened very quickly. So, the Tigers have a good roster. Not a great roster, but a good roster. A, 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 a solid, probably six or seven best team kind of roster. But they were going at a point a minute for basically the first half. Yeah. It, it was insane. They, they were playing out of their skin. And at the same time, the Cowboys just looked shot. And yeah, Danon said it on the, uh, the round review. When, when Tal Malolo dropped the ball off the first hit up, Cowboys' heads just went down. It, it's almost as if they gave up and lost the game there. Uh, Newcastle just, they, they shouldn't have to play more than solid football to get up here. Their spine is looking fantastic. Their, their props, underrated, arguably the best props in, in the competition right now in, in the Saifidi brothers and Clemmer. Um, Look, the Cowboys need a spark. Uh, Tabby Fido didn't provide that until probably the 70th minute for for the Cowboys. Drinkwater had, had moments of brilliance, but defensively was a liability in the first half. Clifford just isn't showing a lot at the moment. Uh, and and Robson just, just a lack. Yeah, you know, Robson, you, know, you could throw him in with Clifford there, and that comes down to to a lack of NRL experience, I think. So, look, the Cowboys harp on on Tamalolo and to a lesser extent Maguire pushing forward, getting the hit ups, getting the second phase option plays, and then trying to create something in 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 the twenty while the Knights can and will do it from anywhere. When you have Ponga, Pierce, Kurt Mann playing out of his skin at 5'8", when you have, like I said, the props, but then Edric Lee, who's a solid finisher. Yeah, I, I, I think that when you mention Clifford and Drinkwater in particular, you've got two pretty inexperienced halves. I mean, they looked good pre-season when you're talking about the nines, but when, you, when you're trying to play first grade and you're trying to steer you know, a pretty a pretty experienced pack around the field, it's tough. And I, for me, that's what's showing at the minute. They're missing a real... The, the, I don't want to say real playmaker because I don't want to discredit the ability of Drinkwater or Clifford, but they're missing that experienced hand in the halves that can pick those options and make those plays. I, I agree with Tabby Ifido. He's just not looking like he's quite there for me yet. I mean, he's a good player. No doubt he's one for the future. I just don't think he's one for right now. Um, the forwards, they've got great forwards. I think I think uh, when, you look, when you look at their pack, they're going to struggle this week. Um, Hess, he, on his day, quality meter maker, relatively consistent, but been off the boil of lately. But when you look to the Knights, Lachlan Fitzgibbon, since coming back from injury, looking really strong. Glasby holding it up. And then the Saifiti brothers and Clemmer as well. I even Shibasaki had a, a really good game last week as well. I thought that yeah. Shibasaki at the centres, covering uh, an absent Bradman Best, who, as news media are covering it, burst the bubble. Um, I thought he looked really good in the centres, but then again, that could be players turning up against their old team, obviously. The Broncos releasing Shibasaki and then Shibasaki getting let loose on the Broncos last week, but I thought he, would, he looked pretty decent. So, yeah, if, if you would ask me to pick a winner in this one, it's nice. Uh, but dependent on what 
Cowboys team shows up, I, I'm going to say Knights by a minimum of 10 here. Yeah, I, I'm i going Knights 13 plus here as well. Um, I don't... I don't say that with a lot of confidence because if the if the Cowboys show up and play for the first for in the first half like how they did for the first twenty of the second, then they could very well uh, shock the Knights here. But yeah, Knights thirteen plus is what I'm thinking. Ponga coming up against his old team as well. It just hey, Ponga just has a knack of knowing where to be at the right time. We, we talk about Tedesco and Tommy Turbo, and we'll get to Manly later, being, being the two best fullbacks in the world. But Ponga, Ponga's only 22. Yeah. He, he's, he, he's a freak of nature, and, and this Knight's spine is, is mortally underrated, in my opinion. So... I'm going Knights 13 plus. I don't say that with a lot of confidence. It's probably going to be 14, 14, 14 point win for the Knights, I think. Yeah. I, for, me, for me, what rests on it for, for this week is if Mitchell Pierce sorts out his fifth play option, uh, you saw him struggle with it last week, kicks too long, running the ball, throwing a couple wild passes. If he gets his option, if he gets his fifth and last option right, then the Knights run this one out. Again, it's the Cowboys. It depends which team shows up. If it's the team from that first half, the Knights put 50 on them. If it's the the team from that back end, where even even when they were what, 37 down, you, you look at them and you go, you thought, oh, there could be there could be a way back. You, you can't write the Cowboys off and they're continually a pain in the ass to try and pick from. It was the same last week with the Tigers, even though the Tigers were the form team coming into it, looked better, and we still couldn't decide. But yeah, I'm I'm going to be fairly confident with Knights this time, and we'll leave that game alone now because we've been on it for a while. <laughs>